What will happen to Windows 10 when it reaches its end of support deadline? Let's find out. Windows 10 is set to have extended support cease on October 14, 2025, which means Windows 10 users have less than two years before their operating system will stop receiving any new updates or improvements. Windows 10 will continue to function after it reaches its end of support. However, there will no longer be active rollouts of security patches, bug fixes, and other updates to your operating system. Microsoft themselves will also no longer offer any technical support or warranty for Windows 10 PCs. So this brings up the question, what will happen when Windows 10 goes end of life? Over 60% of the entire world runs Windows 10 as of January 2024, most of that market share is made up by business and enterprise users who need Windows for work, the rest of the market share goes to home users and other users such as gamers, Windows 11 on the other hand has been stagnating and slowly gaining adoption, though the adoption rate is very incredibly slow, and there's no need for me to explain the reason as to why that is. I am sure we all know why Windows 11 is a failure that is destined to make Microsoft Rush release their next latest version of Windows, Windows 12, which is rumored to have heavy integration with artificial intelligence features and services provided by Microsoft, and there will be a lot less control and preference in the hands of the end user, they will have to adjust to Microsoft's new OS whether they like it or not as the majority of PC users cannot use Linux or other systems, mainly due to the software limitations, a hefty chunk of Windows users rely on specific software that either does not support other OSs natively, or does not have a free and open source alternative or equivalent, and even when free equivalents do exist to try and combat the likes of proprietary software, it cannot always accomplish the same tasks or it may lack certain features you may need. Windows 10 is still safe to use up until it reaches its end of support deadline, and if you're worried about Windows 10 reaching its end of life, fear no more. There are several options for you to consider after this OS stops receiving any new security updates, or updates in general. Firstly, Windows 10 users will have the option of upgrading to Windows 11 provided their hardware meets the minimum system requirements, which sadly is not the case for many Windows 10 users, however, if you want to run Windows 11 but do not want to use supported hardware, you can do that too, but Microsoft officially advises against installing Windows 11 on non-supported hardware, Microsoft could also stop supplying those PCs with Windows 11 on unsupported hardware with crucial updates including security updates, so it's best to purchase a new computer if your current ones cannot run Windows 11, and I know that not everyone has the money for a new PC, but what other choice do you have if you solely rely on Windows? Another option is to use Windows 10 offline, to heavily mitigate any risks associated with getting malware on your system. Once an operating system reaches end of support, it is no longer considered secure to use, in any circumstances, and in business settings, the matters are even worse, the cost of upgrading a computer to Windows 11 or later will be quite cost prohibitive, and it's not just the Windows license fees that rack up the bill, it's also purchasing newer and compatible PCs to run Windows 11, this is even more expensive, and you can see how things would skyrocket in prices in an enterprise or business setting. They run hundreds of PCs which are used for mission critical tasks, so they cannot afford to be down or off for too long. Using Windows 10 offline is not an option for businesses, but you home users certainly can do that, it will help mitigate your chances of becoming infected, no antivirus software will save you against zero day threats, or things which can go undetected in AV software. So the best thing you can do to reduce your risk of becoming infected is to remove all your network connections, unplug that ethernet cable for good, no more wireless internet for Windows 10, it might seem like a major hassle, but trust me, it's a lot less of a hassle than it is to fix your computer after a nasty piece of malware has infected it, or your computer gets held ransom by some ransomware, 
Ransomware is a very dangerous and popular form of malware that only seems to be getting more advanced as time goes by, so you really won't want to run the risk of infecting your Windows 10 system after it reaches its end of support deadline. Windows 10 users also have the option of running Windows 10 inside a virtual machine, using something like VirtualBox, which can emulate the operating system and this is also a great and convenient way to retain access to Windows 10, you can run VirtualBox on other systems aside from Windows and Mac OS, including but not limited to Linux and Oracle's Solaris, so Linux users can also retain access to their Windows software using a virtual machine, however, a virtual machine might not cut it if you rely on power-hungry apps applications or programs which need processing power or graphics power will suffer greatly in a VM, unless you want to go through the difficult and not so easy process of passing a GPU through to the virtual machine, this is not something I think you should have to do, just to run games and other demanding software, if you're going to pass through a GPU, you might as well not bother running Windows in a VM. So, this may not be the best solution to keeping access to a Windows 10 system, however, I do recommend you use Windows 10 inside a virtual machine if you only need basic apps and programs, it will work perfectly, just be sure your PC meets the requirements to run virtual machines, be sure it also has more than enough RAM and disk space, as Windows 10 will need more than 4 GB of RAM to run smoothly and more disk space will obviously allow for more programs and games, so if you're reluctant to let go of Windows 10, a virtual machine can be a great way of keeping a functional copy of Windows 10 around, for those times that you will need to use it. I strongly advise you disable the included network adapter in the Windows 10 virtual machine, so you can heavily reduce your chances of becoming victim to malware. Finally. There is also the option of paying Microsoft to receive an extra three years of security and essential updates, however, the exact price for this has yet to have been announced by Microsoft, but what we do know is that the price will double each year, so over the course of three years, that third year will be the most expensive, so I assume many of you will not want to go down this route. I have heard many say that they wish not to pay Microsoft to continue using Windows 10 after it reaches its end of support, and I totally understand why you may be reluctant to pay for extended support, we saw the same thing happen with Windows 7, which also had an extended security updates program, which also doubled in price over the course of three years, many were able to find a workaround to get these updates entirely free of charge. So if that's the case, we are likely going to see many also try and find a way to get those extra security updates for Windows 10 entirely free of charge. So, what will happen to Windows 10 after it reaches its end of life? We honestly do not want to predict anything, or jump to conclusions. But honestly speaking, I think we may see a huge number of PCs going to landfill perfectly functional computers that are being thrown away just because Microsoft is a bastard and refuses to let people upgrade to Windows 11 for free on their existing hardware, Microsoft, you are the most scummy shit company we have ever seen, and your ruthless decision to have many PCs end up in landfill has given us more reason to shit on you and hate you and it's also given us incentive to find alternative operating systems such as Linux a free and open source angel, Linux is a saint compared to Windows, Microsoft is disgusting and disgraceful, and their acts clearly represent that, Windows is still getting updates which fuck the computer real hard, nice to see Microsoft totally caring for their users, but you guys have got not much choice other than to use Microsoft's substandard proprietary piece of shit, because you rely on it for your apps and games and your hardware is often also only compatible with Windows, and Linux is simply not an option for the majority of PC users, I do not care how many people say Linux runs Windows software or games better than it does on Windows, Windows software obviously only works the best on Windows, the same applies to any software for any OS, 
and then telling people to jump ship to an operating system which is nothing like Windows is just stupid and incredibly wrong, I will put it to you like this, if you cannot write a basic line of code or a script, you should not be using Linux, it really is as simple as that, Linux is not for the faint of heart, it's very reliant on you understanding and knowing various commands, and a bunch of games and software that works on Windows does not work on Linux and using workarounds such as wine or a virtual machine is not the end solution, in fact, it defeats the purpose of using Linux. Because now you're relying on a layer to provide you with the software you want to use, and compatibility layers are not the way you should be using your day-to-day -day programs on Linux, emulation is generally better and smoother on Linux but that is besides the point, you're much better off using free and open source apps, and the worst part is, not everyone can do that, because not everyone can learn new software, let alone find compatible versions of exiting software for Linux and other systems, so telling people to just switch to Linux is nothing other than an overstated meme at this point, you need to understand that Linux is not for everyone, it's got its neat share of advantages. But the sheer number of disadvantages outweighs the benefits for most people, so the fact that Linux won't run your needed software alone is more than enough to make you not want to switch to Linux, let alone even try it, so please stop telling people to just switch to Linux, and also stop telling them that Linux is a Windows alternative, Linux is not Windows, and vice versa, they have so few similarities that I don't even understand why people recommend distros that look like Windows, because while it looks like it, it certainly will not function like it, and if a Windows user relies on Windows software, you're just leading them to make a bad decision, one which will result in them hating on Linux and never wanting to use it again, they will have an extremely frustrating and complicated time using it, so why go as far as to say Linux for Windows users, there is no Linux distro for Windows users the software written for Linux is not the software written for Windows and Mac OS, ok, you damn fools need to understand that Linux is just not going to be of interest to many Windows users, especially considering nearly all of the Windows users solely rely on Windows for apps and games, there's little point telling them to use a system which has far less software support and it's not exactly wise to go and use an operating system which does not support your needed software, so if you do want to switch to Linux, please learn about it the right way, you need to steer clear of people full of misinformation or misleading content, and I can assure you my content is not at all misleading or false, don't listen to the haters and people who write comments on my channel saying that my videos are false or complete lies, they are not. I try my best to provide you with easy to understand content that is as factually correct as possible, and if I do somehow provide the wrong or potentially misleading information, I usually fix it, or somebody will point it out to me, but the misinformation and lies surrounding Linux is an utter joke, that's why I want you to check out my videos regarding Linux, I cover things from migration and survival guides, to distro hopping tips and tricks with Linux, and so much more, so please feel free to check out my Linux playlist, or you can simply search for Linux videos on my channel. Anyway, that's it for this video folks. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.